So I'm going to talk about the current state of SEO and the key tips for the coming months because there's a lot happening. There's a pandemic we just come out of. There's a potential recession on the horizon, which a lot of people are saying is likely to happen. Uh, Google has just introduced a new update and a bigger update that's coming out in December. And a lot of people's rankings are going up and down and a bit AWOL. So what I want you to get out of this um, presentation is to basically understand the challenges your business is gonna face in the SEO market, the key tips and trends that you can implement, um, and what you'll realize, a lot of that kind of supports the elements in terms of what Claire's already talked about in terms of conversion rate optimization on landing pages. But quickly, just by a show of hands in this room, whether you're a marketing agency or an individual sole trader, who can actually, one of your services or what your company does as a whole, who can describe that in two to four key words, just by a show of hands? Okay, that's very, very good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on... John, go on. Tell us. What are those two to four keywords? What do you do? Save tax, automate accounts. Save tax, automate accounts. If I was to get my phone out and type that into Google, would you, come to the, would you be on page one? Sorry. Shall we do that? <laughs> Sorry. Save tax... Real-time experiment here. Automate... Was it automate accounts? You should know if you're on page one of Google or not. The signal's down here. But the, 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 mark, the, the signal's here down bad, so you, this might save you. But no. I'm looking at it, anything comes up, you see ads and then organic stuff. So the reason I say that is because if you know what your business does and you know the services you offer, so we know the services we offer. We do marketing strategy, PPC, SEO, etc. I can challenge any of you to type in digital marketing agency in Leeds because I know we're position one on Google localized. If you type in PPC leads, we're top three. If you type in SEO agency leads, we're in the top half of Google. Like I said earlier, 30 key words for the services we offer and some services we don't offer just to support our wider partners, we're on page one of Google for. So I let Google and people search them because if they're at that level of actual buyer behavior, that further down that buyer purchase behavior funnel, then they're clearly looking for your services. You've got to be at the top of Google organically as opposed to an ad to kind of get them to the site. And I have a famous quote, and I love this quote, because I always say, Google doesn't matter. It, can be it can't be moved, but it can be climbed. Um, and that's just kind of like a metaphor, is that it will take ages to get to the top of Google. We didn't do it overnight. We actually had help from a great website. It comes down to websites, and we'll talk about Callaway Vitals and the structure of website and why that's very, very important with Google updates. But, that's it. but just in terms of where we are with SEO, in 2010, there was 516 algorithm updates in that year by Google in terms of their platform you know, uh, engine. In 2018, then they're the only figures we can get. There's 3,234. 3, so it's been going up. I can guarantee you that's well over 5,000, maybe even closer to 10,000 a year in terms of algorithm updates they do per year now. So that's at least over nine algorithm changes a day on average by Google. You've got 5.6 billion searches per day globally going through Google. That's not a small number. If that was 1p, that'd be, you know, that converted for each search thing. That's two trillion searches or just over that per year. So there's a lot of searches going on. There's a lot of content because when you do that search, it tells you these are, this is page one of how many hundreds of thousands of millions of pages that come up. So everybody's writing the same content. Everybody's going after the same kind of keywords. Um, there's billions of searches happening per day. And the question is, why are you not out there answering questions that your customers clearly have that you should be answering? And why is Google the most important? And these are 2022 figures from Oberlo. 92% globally of searches are done through the Google search engine. 92.01%. Apparently, they don't have a monopoly. But... You know, figures and other elements kind of suggest otherwise. That's more than nine out of 10 people when they do a search or put a question or look for information or look for products or look for searches, they go to Google first. And when you look at Bing, Bing accounted for 2.96% of the marketplace internationally. It actually accounts around about 4% here in the UK. It's actually 96% for Google here in the UK. So if you're not using Google, you're missing out. And this is why it's important, because Google is a mammoth, it's a machine. And it's not just SEO, which is what we're talking about today. There's also Google Ads to consider as well, which is why they make so much money. Okay, so Google has changed quite a lot 
So uh, the best example I can give here is the one on the right from Ole, because Google used to be the platform where people convert, but actually it's the platform where people go to to get more information before they convert. They, it's switching its head. Before I used to say platforms like Instagram, Facebook, used to be discovery because they won't just go on a Facebook ad and convert there and then. They'd go on a Facebook ad and then you'd retarget them and then you'd multiply and send multiple ads to them and they'd get multiple frequencies and then they're like, right, I'm in the position to buy or get a quote for that product or service. And it's it. and then Google would be the one of the ones that Almut's down there because it's bottom of the funnel. If you're typing in, you know, tax accounts or automations, then, or you're looking for those services, you're more in market than someone who might just get standard ad to say, have you considered your tax implications of what's, you know, in terms of your, have you done your tax return so far? The deadline's, you know, 31st of January, if I got that right, I'm not sure. John will um, correct me. But you've got to, ch it's changed in terms of from being discovery to, um, from, sorry, from being more to conversion to more discovery. And the best example I can give is from Ole. So if you type in dark circles under eyes, before that was the ad from Ole. It's a eye concern and treatment products for around the eye. If you type in dark circles under eyes now, it changes what causes under eye circles. Easy lifestyle tips from Ole. See how it's completely different. Same search, someone's searching for the same product, but Ole's changed their stance in terms of instead of here's the products you need to here's a solution to the problem you're having. Giving them information, answering turning that into a question and giving them an answer for it. And they're more likely to buy from that because they're understanding what's causing it. And then I guarantee if you go to the page and the product, the product was like, here's the tips and this is how this product solves that problem that you're having. As opposed to here's a range of products that are great for under uh, dark circles under eyes. You see how it's changing in terms of how they're using text ads to completely different elements or overall. So the trend switched over the years Instagram social media is heavily used for more commerce and Google is mainly used for a discovery engine and that's something you're gonna to have to get on board with. And when I say it's changing, it's changing very, very, very quickly. When we consider that user intent journey is changing online, it's about the information you provide. It's not more content, it's quality of content. It's not just let's get loads of blogs out there. That's not gonna do you any, any good. You want to have longer form content, yes but you want to have good quality, informative content that actually breaks down and answers the right questions. Now, this has been impacting a lot of people since November, December last year when Google did an update. Um, an example I'll give is one of my clients is Pamanda, and that's like basically um, company's house, but on steroids. So if you do a search, it tells you how much they're worth, you, know, you can get a credit report and everything like that, but it's all based on company house data. Now, they have over a million pages, but it's all templated. Same information, same content, you can't kind of unique that. Their indexing started dropping off. So the amount of index pages that we'd got them up to, which was 1.8 million, actually dropped down to 1.2. So there won't be an index by Google because Google was saying that the content on their website wasn't quality anymore. It was too basic, there wasn't enough. But when they update their content and the templates, they do all 10 million in one go, not individually. Now, if you're an e-commerce, that's much more difficult because if you have 10 to 20,000 products, it's gonna take you a long time to provide individual elements like Ole, unless you've got large budgets and a big team to do that. But when we look around the room, and I'm not saying that no one's got like a 10,000, 20,000 product website based in the room, but a lot of them are service-based. So if you've got a small website, which is why we do really well with our rankings because we only offer six services, six pages really. And a lot of our content comes from our blogs and wider elements in terms of what we do, which basically answers questions. So the least recent one is talking about the introduction performance max campaigns from Google and the one before that was about the Google update. So people wanna know why their rankings are dropping off. So if you've got thousands of pages, you're gonna struggle and it's all about unique content. It's not just writing long form, it's unique in that content to that specific pages. And then you've gotta be aware of the Google's automated AI learning. What we found was that with Google's new learning machine, they're calling it MUM, M-U-M, I forget what the acronym stands for, it was launched last year. Um, not really what a MUM should do, a MUM should help, not cause problems. Um, but it was making automated changes to H1, H2 tags in terms of how they appeared in the search results. And you wouldn't really know that, so you have to stay on top of that and keep on top of that. But remember, everything that Google does, it does around one key element, user experience. 
they will only rank your website if your website provides the best answer, the best content, and the best user experience. It's as simple as that. I don't think that's us, I think that's somewhere else. Um, but which comes back to obviously the presentation that Claire did, because if your website has that good user experience, a good user flow, and people stay and find the information they want, yes, you've got to make sure you've got to check out easy for e-commerce, but you've got to make sure that they have a good experience. The longer they're on their site and navigating through your site, Google sees that and looks at it through Search Console and Google Analytics and takes that data and says, right, this person got the information they're wanting for, so we're going to rank that blog and that content higher up because it's more relevant to those keyword searches that happen. The first update that happened last year, I want to give you an update on, is Core Web Vitals. Hands up if you know what Core Web Vitals is. Richard, Mitchie, a few others, obviously, people in my team are going to know. Um, but Core Web Vitals, Vitals launched last year, July 2021, focused on three key elements. LCP, largest contentful page, that's the largest element of the on-page element, how quick it loads. It's got to be loaded before two, within 2.5 seconds, essentially. So when you think of the LCP, you're looking at the big image gallery or the big gallery image in your website. If you've got a video on that website, it's loading. It has to load within 2.5 seconds, and that's on mobile as well, as much as it is on desktop. Then you've got the FIP, which is first uh, input delay, which measures the time when the user first interacts with the braze in the browser, that's under 100 milliseconds. We're talking F1 speeds now. Under 100 milliseconds in terms of you have to tick that box and pass call with vitals. And the same with CLS, which is cumulative layout shift. Have you ever been on a website and then you've gone from page to page and you've scrolled down and the layout changes a little because it's not really functioning? That's what community layout shift means. It's basically when they go from page to page to page to page to page, Things aren't moving around the screen on desktop or mobile. It's seamless. And again, it's got to reconfigure under 0.1 seconds. And that's what Google wants. And it has to be mobile first. You can go and type in Google page speed test. And it's basically just made Google page speed index.com. And you can type in your website or your home page, or you can put in any particular landing page. So let's say you've got that conversion landing page with all the content you want to convert, how well is that performing from a Core Web Vitals point of view? And it, the score has to be above 90. We know on desktop we do 99, and on mobile we're about 86. So we've still got improvements to make from a mobile perspective, but it's an ongoing process. The other update that came out was May 25th, 2022. Um, and this one's a bit of a, uh, an annoying one, unfortunately. So, if you're seeing your cert features, which are basically uh, search engine results pages drop off, and we've seen some of ours drop off, then that's, this is the cause. This is the update that's caused that. Now, we've done a blog about the May update, which you can go to our website, go to the blog page, or we'll share this presentation out with everyone by email, which basically explains everything that's going on. Um, and in six months, there's going to be a much bigger update to support that update that came out in May. Um, it's going to come out into kind of what we call it, two elements. Basically, it's hard to give a lot of update on this one, really, because Google don't really give the code or what the algorithm which is because they want, don't want people to hack it. They don't want people to hack the code or basically game the system, which is what a lot of people were doing in the past with you know, um, hidden keywords on pages, um, throwing links at our website to get loads of links to it. It's all about quality not quantity anymore. And this is just part of that whole process. So your previous rankings have altered. Now we see ours jumping up and down. Like yesterday I saw one of our top three words drop off completely. And then the next day it was back on. I'm like, okay, what's going on there? So we dropped off, we're thinking what the issue is. And it's not anything we're doing wrong. It's just the Google update. And the core purpose of it is to create, again, a better user experience it's all about user experience. So what can you do about this update? So I'm going to give 10 tips here. And I've highlighted the five I want you to walk away with and focus on to support this update. The first being check your core with vitals and invest in your website improvements. For more details, speak to Claire and the team <laughs> around that. But it's the most important element. That's what we've been geared to. We redid our website, was it April, Claire, when we redid our website? in line with the issues we're having with the old website, with because um, it was HTML around Core Web Vitals, and we've gone through that. So we practice what we preach, we've gone through that, we've got a few more elements to do, but it's why we're able to be so competitive in the SEO market with so many agencies and leads. Target long-tail question keywords. 
So there's a better way in which they would put those keywords into Google, you know? And it's right. If that was automated, if you had, um, forget what the four keywords was again, just remind me. Was it tax codes automation? Save tax automation. Save tax automate accounts. So that's probably could be two things. So it'd be like, how to save tax for my company? Do you have a blog for it? That's what you should be looking into. So break down those keywords. Think about the different types of keywords, long tail keywords associated with those call week keywords that you're looking to target and what's the content that can be relevant to that or what pages do you have that answer those specific questions because I guarantee you if you type in a lot of the accountancy based elements it's EY, KPMG and all the other big four really that come up with all the answers and eventually if they get the answer from you yes they might not convert there and then depending on how good your conversion rate optimization is they will come back to you because they got the answer from you so they're more likely to trust you and that trust element is built and if you go back, that's what Google likes. They're like, okay, this person got the answer from what they wanted and converted. We're going to rank them higher because that's the best response for that particular question in that re local region. The other one being writing high quality, long form content. We found this out that actually writing longer firm 2,000, 3,000 keyword content is better for your website. Not doing it every single day. Not even probably doing it weekly. We launch two blogs a month. That's it. And we make it relevant to what's happening in industry, the latest news and updates of what's going on. Um, like we did that blog as soon as the update came out. We waited two weeks, gathered the information. What were people saying on, you know, all these SEO forums, etc.? What was coming out from YouTube videos, other marketing podcasts, etc.? Gather that insights and then gave our results and format on there. And we actually worked very closely with artists and the team at the back um, there for our content writing, but we optimized it for SEO. Keep up with the basics of SEO. And the basics are essentially ticking all the main boxes in terms of making sure your page is structured well, making sure from a technical perspective your website is performing, make sure your content is optimized on site and it ranks for the keywords you want that content to do. Um, your website is submitted as a sitemap to Google Search Console. You've got all those elements set up. Your Google My Business is done. These are the basics of SEO, what I mean in terms of doing, because as long as you update and upkeep with that, you'll be in better stead than most people that probably don't, even don't keep with the basics. And then keyword research should be the forefront of what you're doing, in particular if you're a niche. So if you're in a niche business and you're struggling, you need to really focus on, right, what, who my audience are, what are the keywords are searching for. Um, there's loads of tools out there that you can run. I'd suggest something like SpyFu. We use SpyFu because if I type in, um, my clients or my competitors, my clients' competitors' companies in there, I can see what keywords they're ranking from, what text ads they're running on Google. So it gives a competitive edge. So we do our research around that, saying, well, what are they doing? What are we doing? Where's the gap? But where are the opportunities that are missed as well? So keyword research is something we do all the time because we want to make sure that all those keywords that could be possible to relate to all that content we've created, we don't just want that one piece of content blog to be related to just a one keyword. We want to find all the associated keywords that could fit with it as well, and all the wider terms. So you wouldn't just create a content for those four keywords, John, for example. You would break those keywords down to multiple elements, but they would be directed to maybe one, two, or three max pages on your site, but you would probably have about 20 keywords for that, and that'll help you rank more efficiently. There's others on there creating keyword clusters to rank for more than one page using AI tools, but as a supplement, um, try out content optimization softwares, apply more structured data rich snippets to your content, and obviously keeping out on Google updates. But we always, every time a big update comes out from Google, we do a blog about it, we'll talk about it on our podcast, or we'll get someone else as a special guest to come in at this bite size event and tell you and talk to you about it in terms of what's going on. So that's everything from me. If there are any questions, do let me know. I'll be around afterwards to answer anything. I don't see any immediate hands, which means we both did a fantastic job. Um, and just a little bit of information is our next one is 3rd of August. So um, I hope you can read that. We've got a guest speaker, Rashpal Sagu from Box Media. He's going to be discussing video. Um, and the points of video. Um, it's going to be the same venue, uh, location and time, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. 3rd of August. Tickets will be available next week. We're just confirming what the title of this talk is going to be and getting some content out. So that'll launch on Monday. Um, we're only going to be doing bite size before lockdown. We used to do them once a month. We're now only going to do them quarterly. Um, so, you know, this is Q3, this is August, and then we'll do one um, in November uh, when we're back. 
after summer, and then it'll be basically February, May, August, and November, basically every year, where we'll have a guest speaker. I'll speak as well, providing real educational content, amazing samosas, and obviously food. Um, so, but if you want to be a guest speaker, get in touch. We're always looking for it, and we'll plan ahead, and that way we can create like a calendar on what's coming up and the events that we're doing. And if you want a free digital strategy, you know, contact us, pick one of our leaflets that's on the table, and we'd be happy to do one for you. All right, that's everything from me. So, nothing.